Hey everybody, it's Will Morales. What is it about street photography that draws so many of us out there, so many of us to run out to the streets so that we can capture something amazing? Because if you think about it, what's really new in street photography? Nothing. The only thing that's new is that your first time taking that picture or that's your first time presenting that picture. Things are just new to you. There's nothing new about street photography. It's been going on since the invention of a movable portable camera. And I'll put some dates up in here because I don't know that information off the top of my head. What do you think? I'm an encyclopedia. Most of you people don't know what that is. Damn it. What do you think? I'm Google. <laughs> that was so corny. Coffee sip time. Not sponsored by. Could be. Call me. To me, street photography is the most realist representation of photography there is it's like the sports of street photography unless of course that sport was rigged you know what i'm talking about astros i believe that just taking your camera and hitting the street is just therapeutic it's amazing if at least for me you now obviously you might hate street photography and you might like a more controlled you know environment but you can still create in a controlled environment and still get some amazing street photography Let's discuss how I go about my street photography. So what do I prefer using as far as a lens is a concern? I'm not one who's fixated on just shooting a prime or just shooting a zoom. I prefer to take one or the other. And at the same time, you know, sometimes if I'm taking the Fuji X-T2, soon to be X-T3, stand by for that. If I have my X-T system, I have no problem taking my kit lens, 18 to 55, F2 to F4 range, and my 23 millimeter F2, weather resistant. That's the one I put on the camera first because you never know what the weather's gonna be like. And with the XT, you're, you're guaranteed, you're not guaranteed because nothing's guaranteed, but you're in a better position to have a weather resistant body. Throwing the 23 on there gives you a much better chancing chanting i just make up words it's okay watch along you'll see um it just gives you a better chance to take on any of the weather that's going on so again back to lenses i prefer the 23 and actually i don't prefer i i take the 23 and the kit lens with me because that gives me less to think about when i have the 23 on the on the body i just shoot and go i don't have to worry about thinking about what focal length I need to be on, I just shoot and go. But there's certain times where I need a little bit more reach or I need a little bit more wide open to tell the story I'm trying to capture. And normally what happens is I have the 23 on, I walk into something and I say, wow, this, this is what I want to tell this story. And then quickly just swap out the lenses. But yeah, once I swap out the lenses real quick, I'm ready to take that larger uh, image in as far as a bigger sidewalk shot, a bigger street shot. Am I trying to show one person in the middle of the frame surrounded by a whole bunch of nothing? Am I trying to zoom in to the cup of coffee somebody's having and just show the hands, the coffee and the sense of a conversation going on? Again, I love street photography because it's the equivalent of a canvas where you paint as you go. It's not a paint by number system. It's a system you create the image as you go along. If I'm using my Sony system, I have my 85 millimeter F1.8 I take with me. And I love that because it just forces your brain to go into overtime. You're at a very tight focal length and you really don't have a lot of wriggle room to tell a story. So you have to be precise in what you're capturing. Um, no, nine or 10 times I, I aim for faces, I aim for uh, people walking away. I aim for things that impart the story without a lot of context because you're not always allowed a lot of context unless, of course, you're shooting someone who's down the block, someone who's across the street. You know, it gives you options, um, but not as anywhere near as many as you would get if you went with a wider lens. Now, I do have the, uh, I used to have the badass uh, 20, 25 millimeter, which is the Zeiss Badass but I called it the badass because it was a really badass lens. I loved that, that lens. I only sold it because I would picked up the 24 millimeter G Master and I ended up selling that one too because it was an amazing, amazing lens. But I realized that 
when I got rid of the badass, I also got rid of my Tamron 28 to 75 because I wasn't using it. And then I realized I, I created myself a limit and I had nothing between 25 and uh, 24 and 85 anymore. So I, I, I didn't sell the 24. I returned the 24 millimeter uh, G Master and the clerk at the store was like, no one returns this lens. I've never seen a return on it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not just anybody. So anyway, I ended up picking up the Sigma 24 to 70 F 2.8, which is what I'm filming on right now. And it is an amazing, amazing lens, but it's a little too big to be carrying around the streets and two, because it's so big, it makes me a target. It makes me something that if you're trying to steal people's cameras and lenses, this is something that says, Hey, come get me. This guy likes me, but I'm sure you'll like me even more. R recap on the lenses. There's no right or wrong prime zoom, whatever. Just get out there and shoot with something. As far as time to go, what time is the best time to do street photography? There, there is no good time. There is no best time. I have two preferences. I have first thing in the morning, crack of dawn, where there's no one in the street and I'm able to just pick up the isolation that's out there in the world. And obviously now with what's going on in the world in, you know, from March, 2020 here in the States, you got more chances to get more isolated, isolated streets than you probably wanted to. But before that, it was my favorite thing. Just getting up in the morning, getting out there and taking pictures of people, you know, cleaning the streets, getting ready to open up the restaurants, taking out the garbage, smoking that morning cigarette, typical cliche street photography stuff. You know what? And there's nothing wrong with cliche. It's cliche because it's worked and it's good and it's worth doing. So if you want to take that shot, take the shot. Don't worry about people telling you, oh, it's been done. You know, F those people. As in, you know, fix their problem by ignoring it. And if I'm not going first thing in the morning to avoid the human populace, I like to go when the actual humanity is flowing freely, where there's so many people around and so many things going on that you could just if you park yourself in one spot, which we'll get to in a minute, and just watch people come into your frame, and I mean your visual frame, I don't mean your camera frame, you could start picking up a story as it happens. And you could just, you know, take a couple of shots and, you know, show that this woman is in a rush to get from one point to the other. She's on the phone. She's digging through her bag. There's stuff going on. There's a guy over there, you know, telling his boss that he's done for the day. And you could see that on his face and the way he's holding his phone and gesturing at it that's how people do it they gesture at it and and that's again you know the the middle of the day with the hustle and bustle even now in 2020's problem you're still going to find that there there's enough people in the city that allows you to get some kind of a story now granted you name you may not have new york city in your backyard where you could just you know jump in your car pay an excessive amount of money to cross a bridge or a toll park your car either take a chance and risk your car being towed, stolen or accidented. Yes, that's a word accidented or, you know, take the subway, ride it over or whatever. Either way, I, some, some of us have that luxury of the big city being right there when others don't, but I'm sure you can create your own city, uh, version of street photography. I, again, I, I hold high to the, you need streets to be street photography, but it doesn't mean that you can't do your own version of street photography in the rural farm of a dirt road, you know, or whatever it is, just make the best of it. Go out there and shoot. That's the bottom line of, of all kinds of street photography. Just don't call it street photography because I will at you. No, I won't. I'm scared. Techniques. What kind of techniques do I use? I prefer one of two. Normally it's the sit and wait method. I love the most. Most is the one that I love the most because it gets me the chance to sit in one spot, wait for a target. I mean, a subject to walk by so I could take that shot. And also it, it gives you time to see things. Some things develop slowly over time. Some things are coming right at you. If you're sitting on the middle of the street on a hydrant or a park or a bench or whatever, you look to the left, you look to the right, you can see a rollerblader coming, a biker coming, a motorcyclist coming. You can see a certain person coming with that look, you know, a dude who's 80 years old in high heels and a wig. 
I'm going to photograph that. I'm not going to judge him. You know, he probably looks great, better than I do, but I'm going to photograph him. He looks like he should be photographed. You know, those are the things I look for in that technique, and I call it the sit and wait method. My other technique is involving myself in the crowd. So where you see a crowd of people, you get yourself within in the crowd, maybe six feet nowadays, you know, social distancing whatever it is, get yourself close to a crowd or involved with a crowd and move along with it. Actually watch it develop, watch interactions between that crowd and people coming towards the crowd. Do the, do the people have to cut in between the crowd? You know, that creates certain looks of people looking back and forth at each other like, yo son, why are you in my way? Either way, it's, uh, it's a, it's one of the methods I use and I really enjoy that method as well. Uh, that also brings me back to, I am not afraid to point my camera in someone's face. It's not like it's in their face, like 3000, you know, like this paper right there. It's not that much in their face, but I will pick up my camera and point it at, at people in a general area. So people in that general area will assume I'm taking their photo. Uh, if they have a problem with that, easily show them I delete the picture that I took, show them that I didn't take a picture, respect their wishes that's bottom line respect the person's wishes nine out of ten times people are so busy moving they're going to see you be a little bit like what's he doing and then keep it moving it's a very small population of people that are going to stop you tell you what the f were you doing delete that picture or anything along that line uh, there's also a few vendors a lot of people like to shoot vendors that are on the street because they have a nice setup it's easy they're not moving be careful vendors tend to not want their photos taken whether it's because they're not selling things that are legal whether it's just that they're in a bad place in their life and this is what they're doing to make up that money and you know they're kind of embarrassed that this is where they're at and as well as some people just want to be left out of your business and and hope you respect their privacy also you know, long exposures is a different form of street photography because for me, um, obviously I'm not doing astrophotography like some people. I prefer to do my long exposures at cityscapes across the city, for, across the town I grew up in in Hoboken is the New York City skyline. So it has changed so drastically over the last 10 years. New buildings coming up, old buildings that were classic uh, visuals of the skyline are being hidden behind other big buildings. So I like to sometimes get out there and photograph the skyline to capture the new amongst the old. On that note, separate to street photography, let me end this with, let me end this babbling with this little bit here. If you're going into New York City for the very first time, I highly recommend you take a cab, Uber, a subway, bus over to Brooklyn, over to New Jersey, and take a look at the city from outside the city. You get so much of a different view when you're outside the, the steel jungle. So that's all I had about street photography. Hopefully you, well, actually there's nothing you can learn from this conversation. I was just telling you what I do. You probably have your own method. So let me know what you do when you go to do your street photography or your rural farm photography or your in-town social gathering photography, whatever you guys do, let me know down in the comments. What do you use? What do you prefer? Time of day, stuff like that. Are you an in your facer? Are you a hide in the corner hopefully no one sees you using your 400 to 600 millimeter zoom lens either way whatever it is just get out there and shoot this has been mo thank you so much for spending some time i'll talk to you next time mm -hmm.